Good afternoon. My name is Glenn Kelly. Um, this is Julie Day and Andrea Radley. Um, we're all members of the same team working uh, for the Regional TAFE Alliance. Um, this is a project of the Victorian TAFE Association. Our subject today is diversity in the Moodle toolbox. Um, diversity, as you know, is one of those words, a bit like Marty was talking about this morning, like power that has multiple meanings and we'll be coming at it from multiple viewpoints. Um, if I was to offer you one statistic with respect to diversity as we enter our discussion on diversity in Moodle, it might be this, that this is the one that blows my mind um, and we forget sometimes just because we're so, in, we're so much a part of Australian society how diverse a society we are. So 49% of us either were born overseas or one of our parents were born overseas. So we're starting from a playing field where which is very, very diverse um, to begin with. I'll now hand over. <laughs> we are members of the Regional TAFE Alliance project, team people, um, a team of people formed from representatives of all Victorian regional TAFEs and managed, um, managed by the Victorian TAFE Association. The regional TAFEs are Southwest TAFE, Bendigo Kangan, the Gordon Federation TAFE, TAFE Gippsland, Go TAFE, Wodonga TAFE and Sunraysia. The project is particularly focused on building collaboration across Victoria's regional TAFEs. The tangible outcome of the project is the development and distribution of Moodle-based learning and assessment resources focused on supporting the blended delivery of high priority courses for the TAFEs. These resources are produced using existing materials harvested from the regional TAFEs. The development process is designed to grow and promote models for and practices of collaboration across the partners. Although the regional TAFEs use Moodle as their LMS, they don't all use Moodle in the same way and they don't all have the same version of Moodle. So early in the project survey, um, we had to, sorry, early in the project we had to conduct a survey um, for all the participating regional TAFEs to determine the common tools and plugins to use to ensure um, what we produce will be compatible with all the regional TAFEs. So TAFEs don't necessarily deliver the one course in the same way. A course could be delivered face to face or blended, it could be school based, it could be a traineeship or apprenticeship and that could be uh, work-based or it could be um, workshops that come into the TAFE. So the resources we develop had to be flexible enough for each TAFE to be contextualised to their needs without too much work for them. We have divided the learning resources we create into chunks or a series of assets that a teacher can use to adopt um, or not use, or they can use part of it depending on what they already have or how they want to deliver the course. Our project gives the teachers a head start to development of their units. We're not trying to tell them how to teach, um, we're just trying to give them a head start. Uh, the next slide please. Am I the green. The green? Ah. So, it's a given that lack of uniformity pervades how we create and deliver training across the eight TAFEs, programs from Cert 1 through to Advanced Diploma. We have a collection of learners and teachers who have an opportunity to utilise this very diverse piece of software, Moodle, in a very diverse environment. Are the two a good match for each other? That's kind of the question that we're moving towards. If so, how? Let's go one step further with diversity. We know that diversity is not inclusion, that inclusion is the active component of diversity. Diversity is the noun and inclusion is the verb in this case. So try this as an analogy. Diversity is the dance hall and inclusion is being asked to dance and perhaps then Moodle in this particular extensive analogy is, is the dance moves. So to what extent can people choose their own, what their own dances? How well do they dance together? What free form dancing is, is encouraged? How well does the Moodle instructional designer promote 
the break dancer, the ballroom dancer, the line dancer, or the shuffling foxtrotter whose sense of rhythm is entirely dependent upon looking desperately at the person who is clapping in the distance. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> okay. So, have I moved on? No? Yeah? Uh, no, sorry, thank you. Okay, so the goal of Moodle Education is, and I quote, provide educators with the best tools for teaching so they are empowered to use the Moodle software to the fullest extent in meeting their teaching and learning goals. Is that a lofty ambition or an achievable task? Clearly, it makes good sense to provide your learners with a diversity of experience when it comes to teaching in the online space. So what we have here today in this presentation, we've selected our top 10 Moodle tools uh, that we use in our project, in the Alliance project. And we've also created a diversity index, which you can see on the screen to the right. Uh, and it's a comparative measure of the tool's ability to meet 10 criteria based on a learner-centric approach or a model. Um, and the star rating, we give each, uh, uh, where it rates, we give it a one if it's uh, full compliance. And it gives you a bit of a comparison anyway. So each tool receives a rating based on the following 10 criteria, the areas. So there's engagement, so that's student engagement. Is it uh, interactive, so tactile? Is it collaborative? Can it be social group uh, functions here? Does it provide for some reflection? Deep thinking perhaps? Is there some information transfer uh, where the learner can um, transfer their knowledge into another format? Is it access accessible and gradable? Um, is it replicable? So can they do it multiple times perhaps if it's a formative activity? Is there integration? Does it allow for integration into the learning content and the material? Um, is there any uh, extractable, meaningful data in analy analytics available to it? And ease of use. So the quiz. It's a great tool and we use it for a, a variety of reasons and purposes. Well, to capture engagement is one of them and that's probably a compliance thing that people in the VET sector might know about. Um, as a commencement activity to trigger a notification to a teacher that a new learner has arrived. It can test learners' knowledge um, at specific checkpoints prior to formal assessment um, and as part of uh, formal assessment and to gauge where your learners are at at any given time. So learners benefit here by receiving instant feedback, especially those lovely self-marking questions. It helps them to know that they are on track with their learning and it allows them to test their knowledge after ingesting small chunks of content. Ebooks or the book. We use the ebook a lot in our content delivery and uh, creation. They're content rich. You can configure the book in such a way as to deliver small chunks to your learners. They're visually appealing, especially when you're interspersed with uh, written content with suitable imagery and embedded videos. They look and behave very much like a real book with multiple pages and chapters and subchapters. And of course, they're fully editable and printable for the learner. Learners benefit because they have content delivered in a clear format uh, and that replicates the paper-based uh, books. The assignment, we use the assignment because it's one of the best tools uh, for creating gradable items. Dates can be set which help provide timelines for learners, keeps them on track and for the, the educator as well. It can be configured to allow online text directly uh, or the submission of a range of file types and it can be a formal assessment or an informal activity. Learners benefit in multiple ways from constructive feedback on their learning uh, to submission dates, keeping them on track, as I've said already, with their planning and opportunities to resubmit if necessary. We have the glossary now and that's a, a great little tool that we use. It works uh, with auto-linking to any location where the word or term appears in the course, providing instant references for your learners grappling with the new terminology. Learners can be encouraged to participate when the settings are tweaked so that they can add their own contributions for terms and definitions, making it a more interactive tool. Images and links can also be embedded. A nice feature is adding the random glossary entry block to the course 
Uh, it will display a random glossary term and definition each time a learner lands on the page. So learners have an ability to interact with this tool as they create the resource, transforming their knowledge and deepening their understanding of the topic. We've used the H5P activity tool in many locations because it provides a very visually appealing tactile element to the activities designed to test learners' knowledge. We've used flashcards and hotspots, interactive video, drag and drop, just to name a few. For others that might be familiar with H5P, there's a plethora, there's so many I couldn't even mention them all. Learners experience enriched and interactive learning, which tests their memory, they get instant feedback, and they can have multiple attempts. The wiki, uh, we've used the wiki in a number of areas in our courses. We've also used it as a reflective tool, so a reflection journal, by locking it down so only the educators and the learner uh, see what they've been putting in, so it's not shared. But you can also have it set as a normal wiki uh, and learners can add and edit entries based on simple topics or you can introduce complex concepts if you wish. They are accessible and you can set time limits, you can define templates, check the history of entries and track versions. Learners benefit because it's an interactive tool and they interact with each other and it can uh, transform knowledge as they create their entries. The workshop is a great tool that we've used in the past and we continue to use. While this tool does take a little time to set up, uh, and we use it because it has very powerful peer review and peer assessment opportunities for your learners. Educators control each stage and manage their learners' progression. Learners benefit by developing skills in peer review and assessment. They submit their essays for review and they also undertake the review of others' essays. Um, it's based on a criteria that's set by the educator, of course. The outcome of which is an experiential uh, experience in the giving and receiving of constructive feedback. If taken further, it can be used as a prompt for reflection. We use the forum as well because it uh, provides thought-provoking learning experiences. There are different types of forum, but the two we use the most are the standard forum and the Q&A forum, the question and answer forum. The standard forum is where the, there's some introductory test, test text and uh, learners just respond by putting it in a submission or creating a new dis discussion topic. Um, and the question and answer forum, it forces learners to post before they can review others' posts. So once their post is submitted, that they can then read others' posts. But, so the Q&A forum is great for independent thinking where you want a learner to um, to uh, provide some uh, input first before they read others. Two minutes to go, I'll <laughs> hurry on. Uh, external resources, we use a variety of external resources. They're an alternative to written text and they're dynamic in nature. They include embedded videos such as YouTube, SCORM packages, simple URL or direct LTI to other LMSs. Uh, for learners, these resources offer increased engagement and interactive learning. These Moodle, okay, the last lot, lot we've got here are Greg Bird's UI image and uh, YouTube uh, tools. Uh, for those of you that might have had an opportunity to see Greg Bird and uh, Christine's presentation earlier with the UI elements, there's another one this afternoon at 2.30. But I'll carry on and to the next person to finish off. So just to wrap up, we've got a minute. Uh, we have, until this point, considered diversity mainly in the general sense of catering to a wide audience. Um, before we finish, it's perhaps worth mentioning that accessibility is a consequence of ensuring we cater to diversity. Um, when sites are correctly designed, developed and edited, generally all users have equal access to information and func functionality. What's helped us a lot here, besides the things that um, Danny and Christian talked about in the um, presentation that preceded this is the SNAP theme with its responses, responsiveness and white spaces. Um, we're also conscious of um, tables and um, images with text as we work and closed captions for videos as we create. Um, it's also useful to have an um, accessibility measure um, with respect to the documents and images that we upload.
So in conclusion, Moodle, it's a very rich LMS for encompassing multiple parallel learning strategies. There is no one answer. Let's take all the answers and um, make them and tweak them to work in multiple ways. One of our key design tasks in this project is to encourage students and teachers to bring multiple perspectives to questioning and case studies and content and learning approaches. So Moodle's tool toolbox in its diversity is thus a strength to be exploited in our project. Any questions? My experience with, uh, what is it, workshop, yes. that tool, yes. is terrible. Uh, it is, for me, one of the hardest tools to use and I would love if at the next Moodle in Australia, you guys could run something actually specifically about that because I see the collaboration of student to student communication about assessments yeah. as being uh, amazing integration. Yeah. It's, look, it's pretty powerful. We actually, by coincidence, ran a session on workshops at Moodle Moot last year. We will send you that PowerPoint Thank and you. maybe we can have a chat about it offline.